Welcome back. Now, North Korea has fired four ballistic missiles into the seas of Japan. Reports said that the missiles were launched from the Tong Changri launch base near North Korea's border with China. The missiles traveled over 600 miles before plunging into the sea of Japan. Now, the South Koreans said none of the missiles were of the Intercontinental Ballistic Missile or ICBM variety. It is also considered doubtful if the North Korea has the capability to miniaturize a nuclear warhead. The missile firing coincided with U.S.-South Korea military exercises. Now, among the first to react was the Chinese Foreign Ministry expressing regret. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Geng Shuang had this to say. Anlihui 不做相互刺激, and this is what Shinzo Abe, the Japanese Prime Minister, had to say. Now, the Japanese Prime Minister had to say. All right, to discuss the North Korean crisis, I am now joined by Jason Yeo, a senior correspondent with the Korea Herald newspaper from Seoul and eminent Indian strategic expert Brahma Chalani. I thank you both uh, for joining us in this debate tonight. I want to first go across to Jason. Jason, this is not the first time North Korea has tested a missile. What are the key takeaways or implications from this missile test? It is basically a show of force against um, U.S. Uh, joint military drill between South Korea and the United States uh, because it coincided with um, the beginning of the military drill, which uh, kicked off a week ago, so basically they wanted to um, criticize, um, you know, the military drill. And traditionally, North Korea has been critical of the <clears throat> the military drill, so they uh, want the ally to, you know, stop or at least suspend and their activity near, you know, North Korea. So um, it, which is uh, one of the uh, takeaway for. Uh, their missile test and another part of that uh, recently South Korea and the United States um, you know concluded kind of concluded a deal to deploy uh, US based advanced missile defense system on the South Korean Peninsula so North Korea basically are upset about it so they kind of like uh, you know uh, express their negative view against that so I think there are two key takeaways for this Right, Jason. Also, authorities in North Korea have threatened to fire missiles in response to the annual drills between South Korea and the United States. Now, how do you see the situation developing in, in South Korea after today's launch? Um, I think there uh, is not going to be much um, difference to the South Korean you know, uh, ongoing military drill, drill with the United States because um, it as you said before, it was not the first time that North Korea, you know, did such kind of, you know, stuff. So um, basically, uh, and yeah, South Korea is going to, you know, go ahead with what they have been doing before. So I don't think it will bring much change uh, to South Korean, you know, policy for North Korea. <clears throat> All right. On that note, uh, thank you, Jason, for your inputs. Now, coming to you, Mr. Chalani, what are the implications of the North Korean crisis for India uh, or the world at large? There's a larger lesson to be drawn. When you isolate a country mm -hmm. and you have a sanctions-only approach towards that country, right. that approach will not work. For more than a decade now, the world has shunned North Korea. It has isolated it, it has squeezed it in various ways by escalating sanctions against it. In this period, in the last one decade, North Korea has advanced its nuclear and missile programs considerably. Right. Last year, they fired 18 ballistic missiles and one submarine launched ballistic missile. And this year, they've done five missile tests already. This indicates that they are making rapid progress 
in their missile program. Right. And also, Mr. Chilani, do you anticipate or visualize uh, an arms race if it has not already begun in, in East Asia? What's happening now is that the Americans, in response to North Korea's nuclear and missile advances, are going to deploy an anti-missile system known as THAAD. Right. That has become a very hot topic within South Korea, a very divisive issue with uh, the centrist and the leftist elements in South Korea opposing it and the right-wing uh, main party, which is in power today, supporting it. And more importantly, China believes that the THAAD deployment this year in South Korea is principally aimed at it, not against North Korea. So we have a very divisive issue now at play, geopolitically and also in domestic politics within South Korea. Right. Also, Mr. Chilani, explain to us, if you will, about the dynamic in the U.S.-China uh, relations on the one hand and uh, the China-North Korea relations on the other hand. Uh, how, how do you see these uh, ties evolving going forward? That's a good question. For a long time, successive American administrations have outsourced the North Korean issue to China by granting China important concessions. But now the China-North Korea relationship has sought to the extent right. that you cannot call North Korea an ally of China. In fact, North Korea is making it very clear that they want to escape from China's clutches. They want to improve relations with Washington. That appeal has gone unheeded in Washington. Still, the North Koreans are very clear. They, are, they don't want to be in the embrace of China. They don't want to be a client state of China. And this rupture right. in the U.S.-North Korea relationship has an important bearing on American policy. It means, first, Washington will have to directly engage with Pyongyang. Right. They cannot use China as a diplomatic go-between. Second, any kind of military maneuvers against North Korea could easily provoke a full-fledged war. Right. Today's missile test is in response to the start of South Korea-U.S. joint military exercises in South Korea. So in response, the North Koreans have fired four missiles right. in, in quick succession to, to uh, underscore their, their vehement opposition to such military maneuvers. Right. So the Americans are now in a difficult situation because they, the, Absolutely. they have to be North Korea right. are, are not very good. All right, uh, fair enough. On that note, I want to thank you, Mr. Brahma Chalani, for sharing your thoughts with uh, me on Gravitas tonight. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of Gravitas. But news continues here on Beyond. You can catch all the latest updates on our social media, mobile and digital platforms. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.